Okay. The one I decided to go with is the maroon one that is actually got the bend in it here and a little bit of bend over there. The reason I did that is because it's got its little issues. It's got a couple of dents in the front. But the main reason I kept, I decided to do this one is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's never been, there's never been any filler in the bottom of it. So this fender, basically, even though it has surface stuff on it, is a rust-free fender. So it might have had a little bit of work done, a little bit of filler on the surface, but it's never been replaced. So it's never... We've never had to do anything to it. So this is what we're going to use. So the game plan is I'm going to have to do some bending on that corner. But then I'm going to have to do some bending on that corner to get it back into place. And then we'll do some pushing on the dent. And I have a small dent right here. But other than that, it's just all a DA and down and uh, get her straight. Okay, I got the insides of them done. I basically took a wire wheel and I cleaned it off. They're all dusty right now because my wife had me make a bench for her for her flowers on the patio. Got a little sawdust everywhere. But damage to any of this, just, you know, a little pock marking, but there is no rust through on this one and there is no rust through on this. No, this is the one that I had to do a little work on, get it rebent where it's supposed to be. And she's pretty much 99% back where she's going to go. I gave. This another coat of paint, of course. You can see it's covered in sawdust because of sanding and everything. But um, same thing. Wire wheeled everything down, got her all down clean, and then give her a couple of coats, including inside. If you can see, as much as I could hit inside just to protect it from inside. Because that's the bad thing about GM, is that they didn't think about long term you know, protecting things. They just kind of like slapped it all together and put it together. So let's get these flipped over and let's uh, start doing some DA in and see what we got to do to fix this stuff. Okay. Now, I just basically took some 60 grit on a DA real quick and just hit this for just to get an eyeball of where we're sitting on this. So I didn't do any spray painting anything on this. All I did was just hit it real quick with the DA. So this shows me right here. See this nice little line? This shows me I have a high spot here, which means I have a low spot here, which you can feel with your finger. I have a low spot here. See how dark that is? That DA never even touched it. Skimmed across it from this line and this line and never touched anything. So you got a low spot here, a little bit of high spot here. I got a spot right here that's got a little ding in it that I need to work. And I have a spot right here that's got a little ding in it that I need to work. You can see that little line right through there. They took a hit somewhere. So I need to try to get from behind it and give it a little tap. I love to get it back in place. Same thing here. Give it a little push. And I'm not talking about taking a hammer and beating the hell out of it. I'm talking about just taking like the super long screwdriver and just reaching in for behind it, just giving a light push. See, this metal was stamped. 40 years ago and it wants to go back to where it was but that da just kind of tells me we've got a really nice solid line for the body line here for the fender and this is where i filled these holes just real quick with a welder and i got a low spot here a little low spot here i need to fill and i got some low spots here because this is all this is it's just telling me where my highs and lows is where the shiny metal is that's high where the stuff in between that's low so it's little putty Little putty, DA down, sand it down real nice with 400 grit after the fact. Beautiful. But I like this. This line is nice and shiny all the way through, which means there's no major dents in this whole panel. And like I've always said, this is the top of the fender. This is the angle when you walk up on it and you're looking at it, this is what you're going to see from beside it. Or if you're... This is what you're going to see from beside it, looking at it, walking up on it. So this area and this area is the most important. And I'm not making a show truck out of this at all, it, whatsoever. This is going to be my daily driver. And as long as I can get keep this line good and make it transition and make that nice and flat where that pops like it's supposed to, nice and crisp. and make this area nice and smooth with the the top ridge it's gonna look beautiful 
and it's not really that much work. This was two minutes of me just knocking everything down so I could find the high and low spots. And I got to do a little work here. I just shot the shit out of that with uh, sandable primer a year ago just because there was a bald spot here. And I got a little putty to put in there. It's just a matter of slicking it out. But the rest of it, the rest of this fender line is spot on, except for this one little spot right here, which will work. And so this is not that difficult to do. I'm going to try to get you in here and see if you can see what I'm going to do here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this around here. We're doing this off the table. Okay, so this is your, it's a nice little straight edge. It's just, a, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be surgical straight edge. It's just got to be close. And so I'm just noticing that I have a low spot here that I have to, do a little dinking on. I got a low spot here. I got gapage. I got a low spot in between here and here. But actually, see, I think that it might actually be a little bit high. Because, well, no, we're going to go with the curvature. So this is this is a low spot, and this is a low spot here in between that high spot. So I need to give it a little push here. Give it a little push here. Maybe give a little dink there, and then I got this spot that's got a little, it's got a little, like it got creased at some time in the past, so I need to figure out a way to get in there to that, and I really don't have a way in, other than possibly coming from underneath and trying to push on it with a hammer and maybe a extension or a screwdriver or something like the big screwdriver. To try to come up underneath and get in that groove and just kind of massage that groove right there. Because <clears throat> I'm worried about this low spot here. Because that's going to be in view. I'm worried about this low spot here. I just need to get like from here. Across to that side. Up. That needs to be right. So that it looks correct when you look at it. At the car show. Or when you're driving it. Or when you're showing it to your buddies. So, because this part, 99% of people is never going to see it. The bottom end of that end, 99% is never going to see it. So, this needs to be right. So, the easiest way to get there, see if I have any kind of access for this. Yeah, I do. Okay, it's nice and open. All right. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to get the towel out, and we're going to flip this over, and I'm going to give it a couple of hits. Because I know where my spots are now, here, here, and here, and a little spot here that I need to come in. And we're going to just, we're not going to massage it too much with the hammer. We might use a hammer lightly with like a piece of wood or a block or a p something, something softer than the metal. I'm not going to use metal on metal except for maybe right here. I might go metal to metal right here on this spot just to get it where it's supposed to be but this it's just a, a slight push this is a slight push this is a slight push so it's just now because it's about 95 percent of the way it's just massaging it we're just coaxing it back into its original form all right, all right i'm just going to continue and if i get a little bit past that's fine i'm really not giving it much of a tweak i'm just giving it a little bit of a massage just to have it get back to where it needs to go and really close for right now is close enough and that actually feels almost like it's 90 percent gone so like i said this old steel it's been in the same position for a lot of years 40 years decades and it wants to go back to where it was and this one down here. All right, so this one down here. Yep, right there it is. And right on that spot. So all I want to do is we are just going to lightly give it a, just give it a love tap. Do I, will this fit? Yep, it'll fit. All right, handle of a small hammer. And we're just using just using this as a little bit of a, just pressure. 
That's all it, you hear it? Just, just give it a little massage. Just let it remember where it wants to go back to. All right. Let's see what we did. Well, that one's better. And this one's already much better. Matter of fact, the, the little line is almost gone. This one, this will probably take a little bit more. This one went out quite a bit. And I didn't get to that one. Flip her back over. That one right there. Right there. All right. So if I wanted to go right here, right there, ish. It's not hammer on hammer. This is just by hand. All right. So I got this is being a little bit difficult. So we're just going to just give it a massage. And like I said, just metal, just things that are softer than the metal itself. And that's just an old, old beat up hammer end. And I got this one right here yep, just about right there just pushing just give it a little massage just give it a little pressure just give it a reason to go back to where it originally came from that's it we're just giving it some pressure to remember its old self all right much better see it even cracked the paint because i pushed on it where it needs to go and yeah okay this still needs this one still needs a little work so i know i can get to it all right but this one is much better than it actually was already so Let's flip it over one more time. Give it a little bit more work. Right in there. And we'll just... Oh, yeah. Here we go. There we go. Do that a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing a little bundle can't fix now. <laughs> Look at there. Okay. See? All right. See, and I actually end up going just a little hair too far. And now we've got a high spot sitting in the center of it, which is good. But this line is now a ton better than it was. It's still got a little low spot there, which nothing a little bit of glaze won't fix. And then this one is even almost, oh, it's so much better. A little putty in there, a little putty in there, a little putty in there, a little putty in these little low spots right here. And we're about ready to go. But like I was saying, it's you're not trying to physically force it. You're just trying to massage it back into gently into what it originally remembers it being. Okay. 
Like I said, this is stamped 40 years ago. ka -chunk, a big chunk of steel, two guys on it, up, down, bam, and slammed it out. It did millions of them. Okay. Metal has a memory. I learned that after 25 years of welding. Metal likes to go back to where it was pressurized, pressed into. It likes to go back. I mean, it creates tensions in the panels when there's dents. And it likes to go back to it. It just, it naturally wants to go back there because that's where it's comfortable. Okay. So it's just a matter of massaging it. It's just, it takes time and just keep working a little bit at a time. Taking a sledgehammer to this panel is not the way to go at all. Unless you ain't got no other choice and it's, it's folded into a pretzel and you got to have it. Then you can take a sledgehammer to it, but this is little bitty hammers and just a little pressure and you can get it pretty straight. All right. Let me tell you a story about this hole right here. Okay. So I had forgotten. This is the one that's actually off the original off the truck. It's actually ended up being the best passenger side that I had. And I had already, there's a video out there and I'll probably put a link somewhere here, somewhere here about the video about making this patch panel because I bought a patch panel. And I built patch panels. And this is the one that I built patch panels on. Well, when I built it, that hole wasn't there. Well, what I'd forgotten was is that the body bolt that mounts down here underneath it, it was rusted up in the hole and the head broke off and I was taking the truck apart. Well, uh, me and the son, we decided we were going to drill that out, retap it, you know. And uh, I got a little bit rambunctious with the drill bit. On the third size, drilling, we were about to start tapping. I'm going, 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 and I wasn't even thinking about the end of that bolt, you know, just being there by the threads, you know. I was just thinking I was just going to be going through, you know, I didn't think anything about it. And I didn't even really have a lot of pressure on it, and I had a really good cut and drill bit. <clears throat> right through the fender. So, I'm going to have to dob that up. And uh, the reason I say dob it up is because there's no reason for me to like use anything in their coat hanger or whatever you've seen online. Um, I'm a good enough welder. I can dob that hole up. And because um, these pieces I made, a, there's a patch panel here, there's a patch panel here, and there's a patch panel right down here. Now I made all three of those pieces of thicker grade material. So these are a heavy, heavy gauge on the bottom side because I didn't want to do it again. I want to do it once and I bent them all myself and, you know, hammered them in, hammer tack, hammer tack, hammer tack, hammer tack, did it all in on myself. And they turned out pretty good. I mean, they're not that, I mean, they're maybe a hair, they're a hair under the original, this is the original body and this is the patch. But they're, I bent it myself, got it in the right curvature, cut it, welded it, tacked it. And, but there's plenty of material there to dob it in. Now, the trick to dobbing is if you're laying flat, it doesn't really matter which way you go. But if you're going downhill like I'm doing, you dob from the top down. And it's just, you're just zip, 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 zip. As you can see, I've already got this one done somewhat. Here, I'll bring you into it and show it to you. And all I've done was just start at the top and just zip, zip. Zip, 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 zip. And this has got enough penetration <coughs> that once I get this done and I take the grinder to it, <coughs> it'll be thicker than this because it's <coughs> getting enough in there. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's like, it's just, I'm just going to go, like using this port, I'm just going to go zip, 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 zip. Zip, 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 <clears throat> just so it's filled up, because it's going to be tall, because you're just tacking, but it'll be tall enough to fill that in, but you don't have to cut a hole, you can just zip this up, like I said, like I've said all along, this is just my personal driving around every day, daily driver, I want to get on the road, so I ain't worried about a concourse redo this is what you can do at home to get it on the road make it look really good for a little or nothing okay but that's what this is all about it's just this is me you guys are going to blow my thing up about how i'm doing it i don't care this is how i do it it works 
It's easy. It's cheap. I didn't pay $185 for a panel <coughs> plus 100 bucks shipping. I just didn't. Oh, and by the way, uh, auto darkening hood is the way to go. Like I said, I'm just working side to side. Just a little zinc, zinc, zinc. Is that a cool? Whoop. All right, that one's stuck. All right. All right. See how nice that's coming in? Works great. Done. Done. Now we'll take grounder to it. And if we need to, we'll just do a little dab, do a little dab, a little dab. And we'll spin it over once we get this done. We'll throw a little paint on the back of it so it won't rust because I got everything else coated on the inside. And we're done. That's all there is to it. Okay, ground down. No holes. I right, just got a little splatter on there. That'll deal. Take that off. But the great thing about, I don't know if you guys realize, the great thing about metal when you weld it from one side, it likes to draw. Okay, so it draws towards itself like this, right? Which, since we're going to be bondoing, it automatically gives itself a little bit of a divot. So it's just a hair lower than the panel itself. Which is perfect, because we're just going to bondo over it. But, yeah, that's all. Okay, it's the next day, and I did a little work on this one. And I'll... Is I got most of the big things knocked out. I got this one. She's still a little rough, but she was really did it bad. All the way back into here, there's a line, an indenture where it just dipped right here because of whatever it hit it took right here. I got this line pretty much 99% straight. I've got a little work to do, a little hammer and dolly work left to do, massage this a little bit to get that out. But the biggest problem was this. If you can see, see the this, this was three eighths of an inch deep crunch. This was a quarter of an inch deep crunch. So it took a hit here, wonk, and this was all crunched. So I got this one pushed out from the back. There's access here where I got it pushed out, work from the back. Now, what I had to do is I had to drill this hole to get to that crease right here on this corner because I couldn't get to it from these spots. I couldn't, I couldn't reach it. So I actually had to drill a hole. Now, if you know anything about these trucks, this is going to be covered up. This is where it bolts up to the radar support, and this will never be seen again. So, but I just, I had to drill an access hole to get that worked out. And the reason this is in primer now is because this thing has got about seven layers of paint on it. It's got metal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish layers of paint on it including stripes that got painted over, Lord knows why. But this is what that side looked like once I started da -ing. And you tell me if you can tell a high-low spot with all this business going on. So that's why I got it by 
feel about as close as I could and I threw some primer on it so that I can DA it again and start blocking and find out where my high and low spots are for one color to one color instead of code of multi colors trying to figure out what's high and low. So, but the other thing about having seven coats of paint on it is that minor scratches are going to like disappear effortlessly because it's got seven coats of paint on it. So, but I still have to DA all these pinstriping off. But now this line is good. All right, so we're going to get back to So this one has cured for a day. So let's get back on this and let's get this slicked out. I'll show you how to, I should have all the high and low spots filled out with this one. Okay, then we're just going to start with a nice 80 grit on the DA. And uh, we're going to knock this down and see if I miss any low spots or not. All right, see how that's coming through? And this is filling all the low spots. I got well shown here, it's filled in. It feels smooth to the touch. I got a little spot here I need to work. I got a little spots in here I need to work, but it's basically just filling in all the spots. And I got to work this little transition right here in the center a little bit. And right here on the end, but all the little spots are being filled. So this is pretty good. This right here, I need to work some more. And then I need to work the transition, make it look smooth. A nice smooth transition right here. So this is going to be the, right here is what I'm going to pay attention to the most. And then we're just going to feather it in. Okay. I have DA'd it down, blown it off, wiped it off. Okay. So now we're done with the DA. It's put up. Air compressors are off. Now I'm going to put a coat primer on this, and what I'm and what I'm going to use I'm going to use primer sealer because I got metal open to metal, you know, bare metal showing. I'm just going to use a, a seamer for the first coat. It's just going to be just the coverage, just to smooth it out, and this will show me the little small spots that now have now I have to deal with, and you can. There's going to be a lot of them. Don't think that just because you da would it down, that's going to be perfect. It's not. You're going to find more blemishes. So here we go. And I'm not making a pretty paint job. I am just covering this. And I know you guys are going to blow, blow my, you know, you're doing it wrong, blah, blah. No, this is. This is all going to get just ground down, ground off. This is just filler. This is just a little coat just to fill in the spots to find my little low and high spots. This is a guy coat. And I'm already seeing spots. I'm already seeing high and low spots, pinholes, small scratches that the DA didn't get. And that's what this is all about. This light color contrasted with lights on both sides will help you catch the spots and that's all we just all we did was hit the big spots now we go down to the smaller spots the highs the lows the bits the pieces
This is when the real meticulous stuff starts going on. All right. Do I have any low spot? Okay, we'll do a little bit here. And see, like that dent right here? That's almost about gone. I got a little spot, a little line where the filler didn't quite fill in. <coughs> That'll get fixed. And then I got a couple little spots right here that I couldn't see until I sprayed it very well. And that's all we're doing. We know we got to work here. So let's throw a little extra on here. Where's our trouble spots? Dent. Low spots. Dent. Low spot. Put a little extra in. We got just a little hair left of this can. Oh, I got a spot right here where this filler didn't get it. We'll just add a little bit in extra there just in case. If I mix up a, a batch, if I mix up a batch of putty, which I will be mixing up batch of putty for the other fender, we might have a couple of small spots like right here and right here to fill in now. But 90% of this work is done. 90% of it's done. And this part, this area right here, looks great. I got, like I said, I just got a little couple little spots to slick out. And she's going to look like brand new. All right, so it's drying. We're going to turn everything off, shut everything off, let this, let this harden for overnight. And leave this alone. I'm not going to do any more grind in i'm not gonna do any more work in the shop tonight this is i'm gonna leave this alone right here so but that's how it works you know you da it down find your bad spots beat them out hammer them out smooth them out and then da everything down and then hit it with a uh, some guys use filler some primer some guys use um um build up primer i like I either like to use a Sealy primer or an etching primer if I got metal showing. It just seems to work better. But then I've got a can of filler primer ready to go for when we start block sanding this. But we're going to let this alone and we're going to leave it be for 24 hours. In the shop, shut up. No dust, no air movement. Just leave it alone. I already got this one about three quarters of the way done. All right, so it's got the big stuff done to it. It pushed all the dents out up in here, took care of all that. What we're dealing with today is this one. And this one is relatively straight, except for it took a hit right here. All right. And that's what we're going to be pushing on today. Let's get started. Okay. Now, this one is one of those problematic ones because we're dealing with this body line right here. And that body line is going to show in everything. Whatever color this goes in, that body line has to be right. It has to be straight. And this body line is, I'll use the big straight edge on it. And I'll use the big straight edge on it. It's got a gap. Okay. So this line is a little bit low right here where it took the hit. Bam. Took a hit. Bam. Took a hit. Bam. Right here. So it pushed it in. I've already pushed on this somewhat and I've already took a little DA to it and I got a little high spot there, but this is still very low. And this dent, when you have something hit right here, it affects everything. Everything through here, there's a there's a lump in the body panel, everything all the way to this line. There's a lump in that body panel. There's a way low spot, eighth of an inch. And it goes this big. So one little ding can affect a huge circle of spot. So what's the best way to go with this? I got to start with this. I got to start with this line. I need to get that line just as good as I can, straight as a string. And then we can deal with low spot and low spot and high spot here and work this out. But the most important is that line because in the big picture, that line is very important. So that's why these dents like this are a pain in the ass.
a little bit more here. As you can see, I'm just using, I'm not using a hammer, I'm just using my hand and my old big screwdriver, and I'm just giving it a slight love tap, just in that groove, and just, and not just right here directly underneath this hole, I might actually have to drill another hole, but I'm just doing it from what I have room. And just in that groove, and just letting it remember where it originally came from. Because like I've said in other videos, these metal definitely has a memory. It wants to go back to where it was done at. And we are still going here. And as you can see, I'm using my thumb as a gauge. I, I know where this is at, so I'm just a little bit to this side of this hole is where it's a little low. So we're just going to continue to give it love taps. And I am not forcing this at all. I am just massaging it. Like I've said before, we are just massaging this. And it's getting better every time that I do this. So. All right. Now I got this pretty close. And how I did it was, again, I pushed from the inside out this and I pushed from the inside out this. Now how I did it was basically I just took my thumb and I used this here to press and just like you see me doing other panels, I just put a little pressure on it. In fact, I need to put that back where it's going to go because I put a little tweak on it. And then on this one, it did actually reach and I just give it a with my hand and just kind of gently give it a push out and I'll say it again and again and again is that this metal is really it I mean it's it was a quarter of an inch and now it's a sixteenth of an inch and this one there's no high spots it's just a hair low and the body line is dead on okay so it just takes a little time. This took me about 10 minutes. And then you can, there's still, there's little ripples in here. And once I DA this, you'll see it where it's low and high. But that's just where we're going to put the mud uh, to make this right. Because like I said, this is, I'm not doing a car show. This is just for my daily driver. And we're going to get this slicked out. And then we're going to, so let's get the DA out of this. I have to DA these old stripes. They painted over stripes. Paint it. Don't do that. Don't paint over stripes. So I'm going to take a good majority of this seven coats of paint down with the DA with uh, 80 grit with a new pad. And we'll see where we're set once I get done. Okay, I want to talk to you about Bondo. Okay. Applying Bondo. I mean, you can pretty much do it any way you want to. You can use the squeegees. You can use a paint stick. You can use a butter knife. I don't give a turkey what you use but the thing about bondo is if you feel like you want to try to put it on as thin as possible you're going to have low spots so bondo works best the way i'll put it is is if you think you got it covered you probably don't okay so it takes time I tend to put it on thick, thicker than most, because I got, for some reason, I got a bad judgment of how much I need to put on to cover up 
the low spot that I'm covering. So I tend to get a little slap happy, a little thick with it. But that also makes it where, and you can tell it was starting to harden a little bit. I got, I took a little bit more, more time than I wanted to, but it's, it's in there and it's tall enough. And that also, if it hardens on you when you're putting it on, that'll also make it where it's thick enough where you're going to make coverage anyways. But I tend to just put it on there, let it dry, and sand it down. It might be a little wasteful, but it won't be low. That's for sure. So, and they say a couple hours worth, you know, I've been working at this for a couple hours today. We might just let this sit overnight and start the DA and process tomorrow, or I might give it an hour. And if I get a wild hair after supper, so to be continued. Oh yeah. And if you're asking why there's light blue and pink, the pink, I had two different kinds of harders. One is colored blue, one's colored red. So red turns gray, pink, blue turns gray, light blue. But that's why it was two different batches. The first one I did, heavy with the hardener because i want to hit the big spots and then i went back with not so with then i used up all i had on the red one and then i did a little bit lighter on the hardener on the second batch so it would stay pliable for longer so i could get all the little spots that i wanted to get that's why there's two different colors of bondo on these things heavy for the big spots uh pink for the big spots light blue for the small spots Okay, I don't know if you guys care, but this is kind of what I've always done. And I've always used Bondo brand because I've always been just a home guy doing it. And I always, when I buy Bondo, it comes with one can of hardener in the little cup. Well, the little cup never gets used. But I always buy an extra hardener because there never seems to be enough hardener with the can of Bondo. So you always run out of hardener before you do the Bondo. So... And I always use just use a piece of cardboard. And I usually try to go something a little longer than wider so that you actually have something to grab a hold of whenever you're scooping it. So you're not getting your hands in the middle of it. So you can make your pad here, your pile here, and you have something to grab a hold of, scoop it off of, and spoon it. And I don't know if you guys want to know, but we'll show it. I mean, it's a pretty simple process. I just use a, I mean, we got two panels to do today. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to use pretty much all this can today. What's left? I got about a half a can left. I don't can see half can. So. I just use a paint stick and scoop it out. A lot of guys use a, you know, something metal, screwdriver, whatever you got, you know, just, I mean, I just scoop it out of the can. Yep. And sometimes that happens. Because this is Bondo over time. And this can is a little bit old, probably a year. I've used some of it, but I haven't used a ton of it. So Bondo can get a little bit. Of a pain in the ass, you know, as it gets older, fresh cans always work better. But I'm just gonna, this is gonna do about half of what I have left here. And a lot of guys like to thin this down, I just use it like it is. This is what I'm used to. This one. All right. There we go. She's got a little crud on it, just run your fingernail across it, it'll be all right. All right, and then which one is my older one? I got a black and a red. We'll go. We'll make it pink this time. How's that? And it does tend to separate over time, but just get it in there. It'll get the job done. And of course, some, and of course, sometimes the top comes off. It just gets old and crappy. We'll throw that away. All right. And then you can either use your paint stick to get started because this is pretty thick. And it got clumpy in its old age. But you're basically just turning the gray into pink. That's all you're going to do. That's what the hardener is supposed to do. 
to get the main thing started here. All right, I'm gonna throw this away. And your base is just mixing it until all the little gray streaks go away and you're pink. That's all you're doing. Just getting rid of the gray, turn everything pink. And see how there's still a little gray in there? You just move it around, get everything scooped up, get everything moved around. All right. There we go. Now we're pink. And now I grab it with my finger. Okay. And we're back to, again, multicolors. Okay. But here's the thing about this panel is that everything that's red is a possibility of being a little bit low because that was the top coat and you know there's a i don't know what the thickness of it was but it was pretty thick so we've got most of the bondo down filling the spots that need to be filled here this is the biggie right here see this that low spot was this big and that low spot from that hit and this is that see where the, the filler is right here on this edge so we're going to see how clean that is but that's how big that spot was and that was that rust spot and there ended up being a low spot up here and low spot here and some work to be done but basically the red this is all just da this is not final block sand or anything so it's late and i have to work a double starting working doubles tomorrow so we're just going to shoot some primer on this and see because it's hard for me to tell I'm not that guy, okay? I can feel them. I can feel highs and lows, but I haven't been doing this for 30 years as a job, so I don't have that micro feel. So it helps me to put a coat of something on it light to see highs and lows. Makes and it since we blew it off and wiped it off and there's a lot of metal showing, we're going to use etching primer on this one to grab hold of that. Barrel. All right. While she's wet, and she's going to sit overnight and harden. I'll just show you. See all this? This is scratches. I DA'd this sucker. See? Scratches. See it? I spent an hour da in this whole panel, end to end, stem to stern, knocking everything down. And she still has scratches. Look at that. Scratches and lines. Look here. Scratches and lines that... After, you know, a couple hours of doing it, I couldn't feel my fingers anymore, but she's, she's still got a lot of work to go. Look at all this. Now, she's pretty straight. You know, there's no major dents left. As you Okay, Eric, so you can see it. See the Bondo? See, primer will soak right into Bondo like a sponge. It's dry to wet. And so you can see where the and so you can see where the bondo line is here for that thing, but that's how much of a low spot there was in that panel. Okay, so that's gonna cure. So we're not anywhere near close done. You know, little spots here, spots there. So this is gonna let let this sit overnight. Turn everything off. Just shut it up and let it sit. And see scratches. Look. And I'm tired enough now that I didn't even feel those. And I DA'd this panel for an hour with 80 grit, and it still got scratches in it. That's how much, that's how foobar this fender was. But the big thing is, is that the big dents are gone. The panel, where the troublesome area, remember that kink in the middle, the center of it? Look at that line. Look at that body line. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Everything else can be worked, but that body line right there, that's the hard one. And she's straight as a string. Look at there. And she was dented up. That was a quarter of an inch deep dent on both sides of that thing with a crinkle dead center. Yeah, that's pretty good. So if you're still here and you're watching, like, share, and subscribe. Come back for number three, number four, whatever this is. Come back, come back for the next one because we're going to just keep working these and I'm going to go step by step, show you how to do it at home, home tools, 
you know, to get your ride back on the road, respectively. With respect, respectively, uh, whichever way it goes. So like, share, subscribe, smash that bell, hit that button. Tell your friends about Uncle Buck's stuff.com. Y'all have a great day. Because a great day today and a couple hours of work, you can be 90% done with your panel. Y'all be good. Hello. Welcome back to Uncle Buck's Garage. Today, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to spot putty a panel. Uh, and on that one, we still have to do some DA, but then once we get that done, the DA is going to get put up and it's going to be pad sanding, block sanding, and spot putty. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to talk about why I use spot putty instead of just put a whole bunch of product on it and then sand it off because that costs money. Okay, where I can spend six bucks. For a bot, a uh, thing of glazing spot putty uh, at Walmart, and not end up just leaving gallons of paint on the floor after sanding, after sanding, after sanding. Okay, now, okay, the basic. Here's your scratch. This is your scratch and your paint right here, right? So if you spray, you're putting a layer on it like that. You're just putting a higher layer on the top side and not filling in the crack. So if you instead of doing that, if you come in here and take the spot putty and you put it in that crack and then you sand it off, you're not sanding away all that product you just spent money for. So that's what the spot putty is for. And if you see in this panel over here, there's a lot of spots in this panel. And basically how I consider this is you're just glazing the cake. All right, you've just taken, I just, and that whole, that whole deal, I did on just one corner. This is just one corner of a, of a spur. It just goes on and you just spread it just like glazing the cake uh, and multicolor seven layer one. This had spots all through it. Cracks, spots, just all kinds of stuff. So, but the thing also about this is, is this is, this is a lot softer than, than Bondo. This is just spot putty. So, this will, with uh, 150 grit, 200 grit, 400 grit, whatever, this will just flake right off and powder right off and just leave you your spot. And then once this is ground down, then you will be priming it. We're going to prime it one more time and look for more spots. And it'll just cut down this. And you just do a couple layers. And then you block sand it. And you give it its final coat of color, whichever it's going to be, which, you know me, that's going to be, it's going to be, um, Flat black. So now we're just waiting for everything to dry. And when you know you know it's dry, it's when it turns pink. When it's red, it's wet. When it's pink, it's dry. And then it's just a matter of starts using the sander. And what I use, and I've been using this thing for years, is my black and decker pad sander. And it's got the edges of it a little worn down a little bit, but that pad is nice and flat and it makes quick work of it, and we'll just be going over the top of it, and I'll show you how we do it once it all dries. But that right there is 400 grit that's in it right now, waiting to just dip this down and just smooth this all out. Okay, so what we're looking for is shadows. And like right there, shadow. And we're just looking for little spots, pock marks. Like right there. That, that's where we're looking for spot putty. So basically, there's some discoloration, which is some low spots. So you can see where we're going to be putting this putty in. But you're just looking for like that scratch right there. See that scratch? I don't know if you can see it. But there's a scratch right there and using the and there's a scratch right here and there's just, just a couple of spots here and see like right there there's that's a shadow that's a scratch that needs to be filled in with spot putty so the easiest thing to do is you just use your corner and you just kind of squeeze it out like toothpaste right and all you're really doing is you're just you're you're just filling it in and just, what do you call it? Just 
you're just uh, glazing the cake. You're just, you're finding the little spots. You're just putting a little bit in. You're going to have to put it on a little thick, though, because this stuff is kind of watery. Yeah, I know, but it's straight out of the tube, and there's no mixing involved. Yeah. Oh, where's the other spots? One right there. Yeah, there's a. bit up in here too there we go and you ain't got to hurry because it'll it doesn't drive very fast but you're just just filling in little minor spots okay we'll let it dry for a while and everything is nice and light and pink so now the fun start stuff starts so basically this is all kind of straightened out right now. We got some little small spots, but the easiest way to do it, you can do it one of two ways. Power assisted, but that's my good old fashioned Black & Decker pad sander I've had for 30 years, or you can do it with a blocking pad. And all right, with the sanding pad, Bob Putty pretty much goes away real quick. Okay, and see, this is just filling in even the more little spots. You're just finding the, just, you're just refining it out. High, low, high, low, you're just filling. This is the coat that we just put on right here, and this is the, the lighter coat in here. This is the spot putty, the low spot, and you're just filling in. And see, this is just a little haze of a low spot right here. You're just refining it as it goes. Okay, now I just want to show you guys how to sand without leaving high and low spots in your sanding. Okay, now, you don't ever want to put the sandpaper under your fingers and sand like this. The reason that is is because it's uneven pressure, and it will leave grooves where you'll be able to see it in the paint once you get done. The best way to do this is basically you just fold it or get a piece. You put it under your thumb like this. And you bring it under the palm of your hand like this because when you're so when you're sanding you're sanding even pressure and not leaving grooves in it so like right here i got this spot right here i want to sand this and just get just knock it down a little bit and you i'm just hooking it with my thumb and just e doing even pressure side to side never like this because that well, i've seen it happen guys sanding like this and they end up with streaks in their sand and this is the most important part. The, pr the prep of the part is the most important part. So even pressure going sideways and never even with your fingers. Okay, it is the next day. And here, this is the fender driver's side. This is the one that had the big, bad, dent, dead center of it right there and was bent on that end and on this end a little bit that we straightened out. Okay, so let's see what we got. Let's get our flashlight up. We got still got spot putty do. We got a little spot there. See that? See the shadow? Got a little spot there. Let's see what we got on the. Actually, it's got a little wave in it right there. A little, I can see a little wave in it right there. Needs a little bit of work. It's got a little spot right here. You can see see the, see it? Yep. But all in all, she's pretty slick on me. I mean, this is where that dent was. And that, you tell me. That's pretty good. Got two, three spots on this one, three small spots, and four or five small spots on this one to fill in with spot putty. And let that dry, sand that down, put. A little bit prime over the top of those and let that cure. And then it's block sanding time.
Okay, after all that work, this is all we got left for spot wise. These two spots here, three on this panel, these little bitty spots here. I did forget about, I had a spot here that I noticed last night. And then these, just, just be careful and nothing on this end. It's, but that's the process. DA it down, find your low high spots, which this panel was, man, it was a mess. It, seven layers of paint. And I still had red showing the top layer after all that sanding and all that DA and on this one. But the, the dents that was in the front of that one, the big gash, that one's gone. The big gash that was in front of this one is gone. The dent in the center of it is fixed. As you can see, that line is straight as a string. But this is the process of at home. Now, now if this was a shop that was doing this for a living, okay, they wouldn't do this this way. They would not. This is in home, doing it yourself, spending the least amount of money to get the best products you can get with home tools, with, you know, home setup. A big shop, they wouldn't do this. They would just replace the panels. They would just, you would be spending the money for a panel because these days, paint and body shops are just body replacement and paint shops. They're not dent fixtures. They're replacers, okay? So I'm saving, I would say, north of $700 for these fenders of doing these myself with a $10 thing of Bondo and a $6 thing of Spot Putty and about four cans at seven bucks a pop, seven, eight bucks a pop of decent primer. So what is that? 40 bucks as opposed to 700 and just putting them on and hoping they fit because I know these fit because they're originals and the metal is stronger. The metal is thicker and you can weld on these and okay, you can beat on them with a hammer and you know, they have the memory and they'll come back. So this is the difference between using your time or your cash. And I would prefer to use my time. So if you're still here, like, share, and subscribe, hit that button, smash that bell. Tell your friends, check out UncleBuckStuff.com for a little merch. If you would like a hat or a t-shirt, I'll be good. Hello, welcome back. Don't go with the garage. You're home for old school how-to. Today, we're doing that hood. In the process of making a a, long, a big flat piece laser straight with home tools that you can do at home yourself and you ain't got to take it to shop and spend thousands of dollars for a job. I'm going to show you how. Let's get to it. Okay. Now, it's about a little bit late. What we're going to do is I got this thing about, I'd say 80% done. I got a spot here. I got a spot over here that I need that's a little bit low. And I got a spot over there that's a little bit low. And I really don't want to mix up a bunch of paint. I mean, uh, I really don't want to mix up a little batch of Bondo just for these two little spots. Actually, this is a little high, which it's it's a low spot, dent, low spot, dent, and low spot, low spot. So I'm hoping, and they really feel really small, but they're there, and I'm hoping that I can shoot some paint on this. Remember where these spots are, throw a little extra on these, I'm going to use, I got a filler primer up there in the shelf. So I'm going to use some filler primer. Yep, low spot. But that's, like I said, that's what that long board will do. Okay. So fresh towel. You know, fresh towel still got debris on it. So we're just going to wipe it down one more time. And then I'm going to shoot some uh, paint on it and let it cure overnight. Some uh, filler. And I use, uh, we're using Rust-Oleum today. And uh, there'll be a link for that down below. Help the channel out a little bit. Okay, what I decided to do was give it the low spots a little bit of extra paint on their own before I painted the whole thing. So I'm going to let this cure out for about 10 minutes. And I found that's an extra one in the middle of the hood. 
these two spots, that spot. So I'm just going to, I got a little bit of a beverage over there. I'm going to turn the radio on a little bit, check out YouTube, do some surfing. I'm going to let that cure out a little bit. And then I'm going to finally finish shooting it. But we'll see if this plan <laughs> works. It should work. It could work. Maybe it'll work. Okay. She is shot. She is drying. There's that low spot. I put a little extra paint in there. We're going to leave her be for the night. But all in all, I really can't complain. So we're going to let this cure overnight. I'm going to turn the heaters off, turn the lights out, and just let her sit. And let everything cure out real nice, and then we'll block it again tomorrow. It's late, Friday night. But from what I started with, I would say this is about 95% done. Well, it's Saturday, and she cured up overnight. You can see, you know, Bondo spots, Bondo spots to the gray, you know, Bondo spots. And right here, problem child, you can still feel it. Still there. It didn't quite fill in. It may be a little high here, a little high there, but it. We'll pick the longboard to it, but really, I got a little thing thing right there I got to work with. But all in all, and a hole, she turned out pretty straight. And we're going to block it again with the longboard and then with the short board to make sure we don't have anything that we're missing. And that will give us the tell on that spot that's right about right there of whether or not we need to do a little bit more work. But I think I got everything took care of with the extra paint besides this spot well i got this one spot right here this this spot right here this one it's about a 16th of an inch dip and i can't there's no holes underneath for me to get to it to try to push it try to get out so i guess we're gonna do we're gonna do a bondo spot another second bondo spot all the rest of it is spot on straight so including the front including the troublesome area in the corners there and everything all squared out so you gotta mix up more bondo put a patch about this size right here so i can feel it it's got a it's got a bump right here and it's got a low spot right here that's what i'd send i took a 110 grit to it or 100 grit to it just to scuff it up so that the bondo has something to grab a hold of real good so one last spot, a bondo, and then letting it dry and sand it down, and then we're ready for block sand, some more block sanding, because I've sanded this twice now. Okay, I got my spots. I went through with my little, if you guys have not seen me use my little flashlight trick, then there'll be a video right about right here, right about right now, but... Um, I just use a flashlight to find shadows. Shadows are low spots, okay? So I've got my spot putty in my little places. Here's my bondo for my one bad spot that is drying and curing right now. So it's just a matter of letting everything dry, letting the bondo turn to light pink so you know it's dry so we can bust it down. Or the just a matter of letting the spot putties all dry. Turn, let them turn from dark red to light pink. No, they're dry and letting that cure out. So we'll give this about an hour and we'll wait for that to harden. And then we'll bust all this down and go from there. Okay. It is nine, uh, It is 8 o'clock on Saturday night and I have just got done wet sanding this thing. I think I got her. That's what I had to do to get it right. Everything else, I got some bald spots, but those are just high spots. And I think we're going to shoot this final coat primer and then let that cure. As you can tell, made a mess wet sanding. And see what we got in the morning. See what we got to do for final wet sand and then final spot. If there's any kind of small pinholes or anything that I've missed, 
And so I'll shoot some paint on this right now. I got a couple spots that are still curing, but all in all, she turned out pretty good. I end up with a light spot. I re-hit that right there, but that's not a blemish. But really, things are still curing. It's still a little light here, light there, but I think I might have it about done. Except for one thing, one thing, one little air hole in the Bondo, one little air bubble in the Bondo and a little squiggly, whatever that is right there. That's it. The rest of this thing is cherry. I can't believe it. One air bubble, one Bondo air bubble. Look at that. Ugh. But it's late Saturday night. I'm gonna let this cure overnight. Leave the heater running because it's cold outside. But yeah, it came out clean. Oh, there you go. That's the last of the body work on this hood. I'm gonna go ahead and let that cure tonight, and I'll just over it with a probably 400 grit. And then I'll wet sand it one more time. And then we'll shoot it. If you're still here, like, share, subscribe, smash that button, hit that bell, tell your friends. Check out UncleBuckStuff.com. If you'd like to help out the channel with a hat, t shirt, or hat, it's late. But I'm enjoying it. Okay. Last step before color is a couple, three brand new towels and some lacquer thinner. And I'm going to show you how to do this. We're just basically going to do a wipe and a flip and a wipe and a flip. That way we're not smearing because there's still going to be dirt come off that. So one wipe, fold it, one wipe, fold it. And once it's got all the, the sides are dirty, throw it away, get a new one. I'll show you what we're going to do. All right. We're going to fold it into fours. It's already got a fold in it, but we're going to fold it into fours like this. That way, and we're going to put lacquer thinner on it, and it'll soak through the rag. It'll soak through the rag, and then we're just going to, just like that. See how that got dirty? Flip it. See? Still got dirt all in it. All right. Then flip it. All right, then find a clean one, and then flip it. See? And if you want to, you can refold it just like this. Clean side. Still wet. See? Look. Yep. Wow. That's pretty dirty. All right, flip her again. There we go. Okay, see? It's still... Alright, that's the final. So we'll do that. That one's gone. Put that one in trash. Get a new one. That's kind of how gross it gets. It's dirty. It's still got dirt on it. Alright, now we're ready to paint. But do we want to paint it flat? Or we want to paint it horizontal. All right, there's the first coat, and yeah, you can tell that how I painted it. Zing, 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 zing. You can tell, and if I left it like this, it would show. But we're not going to leave it like this, okay? So I'm not going to do any more um, block sanding, but I wanted to show you something here. All right, so that first one, that first coat was done with a a tip like this, okay? Just a regular round, you know, you can tell, you can tell where they were, you know, and and you can tell where I overlapped, you know, pretty uniform. What we're gonna use 
what we're going to use is these fan tips like this. Now, these are the last two cans of this that I have. You know, flat enamel, black. And that's what we're going to do for color for this. This was, this was a uh, flat black primer with the wrong kind of tip. So, we're going to use this with a fan spray on it to do the final coat. To get more uniform, to get it to where it doesn't look like this. But the trick is, see, the reason I went this way with all of this is because with this, we're going to go this way. So we're going to get coverage both directions so that whatever low, high, whatever thin, heavy, everything gets uniform, including the front, which actually turned out very nice. I was kind of worried about... I don't know if you can tell. There is no spot. There is nothing. There's no blemishes. She's pretty straight, except for, you know, the overlap. So, so, but yeah, the trick is your final coat is with something with a tip that has a fan spray on it. Because if you try to use one of those regular round tips, it's never going to turn out good, especially not with a large piece of real estate like this. You know, it's or like a like if you had a a long box, a fleet side long box, it wouldn't look good. You, you just could, you just can't make it look right. You can spot a shot a paint job like this from a mile away, but this this fan tip going opposite direction of the way the first um, coat was done, it'll fill everything in and it'll look beautiful. So I'll show you that in just a second. Oh, another trick is I basically warm these up. With that, I stuck them on the floor in front of that heater, and these cans are about 70 degrees. They're warmer than the actual ambient temperature, which does help keep these cans. So you can you can dip them in water, you can do whatever you want to do, but warm. If it's like right now in the shop, it's 58 degrees, and I, these cans are about 70, and so this is about 58 degrees, and I have the heater blowing directly on it. So I'll shut that off when I shoot this, but just, they say temperature range 50 to 70 is the best temperature range for this kind of paint. So we're dead center. So, well, I had to stand her up on her edge because putting it on the saw horses, uh, tipping the can, it was, it was leaving streaks and it was uh, even worse than what it looks like, like it's curing right now. I did the whole, Half pattern, half pattern, half pattern to I start from the bottom, work its way up. But because the can was sitting at like a 45, it was deposited heavy on the bottom edge and light on the top. So it was leaving streaks 10 times worse than that. So <clears throat> I got that's one can, uh, the final coat. I got one more can to use. I'm going to let this cure for about an hour, let this cure out, and then we'll shoot it again. Probably shoot it two more times because this is going to, you know, main focal point of the truck. So we're going to make this look as slick as possible. I know she looks glossy or semi right now, but she, it's a, it's a, it's just a set, not a satin. It's a, you know, flat black. It'll cure out flat just like the rest of the truck. But to be continued. So if you're still here, like, share, subscribe, smash that button, hit that bell, tell your friends. Check out UncleBookStuff.com. Uh, check out a hat or t-shirt, see if you'd like to help out the channel. Y'all have a good day. Because good day today can mean a slicked out, beautiful hood in the morning. Y'all be good. All right, today we're going to do the final wet sand on this thing. And wet sand is a very simple and basic thing. It's, it just, it's, it is exactly what it says. You're wet sanding. Okay. So I just have, this is 320 wet, dry paper on a block. I'm going to wet the surface, right? I'm going to wet the surface. And basically all we're doing is we're just getting all the little final scratches out. All the little things that would show in the paint job and all we're doing 
is just knocking the haze off. Because if you feel this panel right now, it feels rough. Feel the panel right here now. Now it's slick as, you know, it's not on a doorknob. So we're just knocking the haze. We're not finished sanding. Well, yeah, you could consider this finished sanding. But this is the final step to the really good paint job. The really smooth one. See, and I felt the grab right there. There's extra right here. Yep. And you'll feel it as you're going like here, smooth. And here it starts dragging. You know you have debris. So, and see how nice that cleans off? And you got fresh. You just keep it wet. And you just keep working it. And you can go back and forth. You can go this way. It really doesn't matter. You're just knocking the haze off of it. You're just getting rid of the roughness and making it smooth again. Oh, like glass. Yeah. Because if you feel this, it's rough. If you feel this, it feels like you're putting your hands across glass. That's the reason for a wet sanding. And you just keep it wet. And just keep working it. And I'm just doing this inside the shop with a square bottle right now because if I would be normally be doing this, I would be doing it outside with a water hose. And I would just be running water over it. But because it's 15 degrees outside in Oklahoma right now, I'm not out on the porch. I'm inside the shop. And see how see how your paper would how it, it normally would gum up and it'd be just be full of goop if you're doing this? Because the water helps it glide and just you're just taking the stuff off, okay? You're just taking off. Just taking off all the roughness. Done. Okay. And you can tell the difference between the two. And we'll do the... We'll do all these curved parts just by a piece by hand. Because... If you're careful, you can do it just barehanded around the corners and stuff, and you ain't got to get crazy with it. There we go. Now we're doing good. But that's just the, that's wet sanding. That's all there is to it. And it's still dragging right here. So we'll clean our pad. See, and it's still taking some, a little bit of material. <laughs> There we go. See, and there's our two spots. One spot and a little squirrely. That's all that's left of the spot, buddy. So, yep. Then if there's spots like roundness, odd shaped, you can just take a piece by hand, get it wet. And I suggest just to be safe, you get it wet on both sides, and then you can just do it by hand. You can just, all you, like I said, all you're doing, and this is that tuck the thumb and use the side of your hand, not your fingertips. Because even though this is 320, 320, 400 grit paper, it could still take, go down the metal, just like you see over here. It took it down the metal. But that see, it just takes it right off. You just get it wet. You can go around the round spots. And this is what we'll do in the front where all the roundness is. And we're just, just knocking the haze off. And you can use it. Uh, this is the one spot where I say, if you're going to use your fingertip, you just do this. That's all you do. Boom. And you're done. Just on that ridge. And if you want to, you can do it over here on this ridge. 
And you're just, like I said, you're just knocking the haze off of it. That's all you're doing. Just like that. And that's the whole premise of wet sanding. Is you're just around the corners. You can use your hands around the corners. <laughs> just like that. Blocker pad, your choice. I had to refill my bottle. But I got smart. I refilled it with warm water. Which ain't gonna hurt nothing. Warm water is fine. Just getting it wet. And first time you do this, you'll notice you can rub your hand on one you've done and rub your hand on one that you haven't, and you can definitely feel the difference. There's a huge difference, okay? Matter of fact, I just caught a spot right here. And it's just a matter of waiting to feel for it to drag. That's all there is to it. It'll just drag. And once it starts going across smooth and not dragging, you know you're done. You've got all the, the top overspray haze took off of it, and then you're good to go. And Sorry about that little interruption. I had to do a little honeydew for a minute. But that just goes pretty. You don't have to be on top of this right there on the spot because, you know, it's already got paint on it. It's protected. So, all right. So, like I said, you're just going to get up here and get her wet. Definitely helps to have a heater running. See, really nothing on the block. Where if you were doing this dry, this stuff could be full of goo right now. With all this, with a sandable primer, the sandpaper would be full. That's another cool thing about wet sand in this. It doesn't fill up the sandpaper with stuff. And this is still dragging. I got high spots in here. Wow. Okay. Well, that warm water, that warm water makes a big difference. Remember that, guys. Fill your bottle up with warm water, even hot. Doesn't hurt nothing. Okay, now we need to do the front. Oh, and I need to do one thing over here. I got the edges here, but I need to do this edge right here. All right. Same thing. We're not putting a lot of pressure. We're just knocking off the overspray. Just clean it up because the next coat, the color coat, that's the one that this is for. Now, there are some flat, flat spots on the front of this, like this whole surface right here is all flat. But still, do you, you know, when you're dealing with a compound curve, when it comes to wet sanding, I've never had a problem. Some guys, because, you know, it, you're talking about round with a square block. Okay, so um, some guys have problems figuring this out. Well, I just, wherever I got flat, I use the block. And whenever I got round, I don't. Okay. And like I said, on this, you are just getting it wet and you're just cutting off the overspray. That's all you're doing. You're just making it Doing the final, taking the final roughness out of it, okay? And and since I got a flat surface here, we're going to wipe her down a flat surface. But this is a real nice flat surface. So... And as I said before, I'm not this, I'm not trying to take material off. I'm just trying to take the, yeah, smooth as glass. Yeah, smooth as glass. Okay. Now, round edge. You're back to your single piece of paper. And as you can see, even though we've been using it, it's clean. You know, just throw a little water on it. Same thing here. So we know we got to about right here, and we need to do this right here. And again, not like this. Like this. And again, like I said, we are just 
All you're doing, you're just, you can use the full sheet if you want to. Been known to do this myself. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do it right now. Just use the full sheet. All we're doing is knocking the haze off, okay? That's all we're doing, knocking the haze off. We're not really moving any material. We're just making it slick. Just the overspray. That's all we're doing. Just the overspray, okay? like glass okay and which this one still rough okay we're just knocking off the overspray that's all we're doing we're just making it slick Whew, that water that water cools down real fast and if you want to know if you're getting it if it feels good Run your finger across it. Ooh, yeah, like glass. Okay. And this one's still rough over here. Okay, now. I'll do it over here on this side. Okay, we'll show you on this side. See, now, this is a weird little corner right here, right? And it's kind of the same thing. You got, you got round, you got flat. So... Just use your fingers... We're not trying to take material off. We're just like butter. Okay, yep. And I got one little spot right here. Oh, yeah. Smooth. Yep. No haziness. Smooth. All right, got to do this over here on this. Don't feel then don't be afraid to run your hands down and see if you can find any rough spots because that's the whole point of this. Okay, now now we got to wipe it down and we're going to take a we're going to take these off cuz we're done. This is this is ready for color. Okay, so we're going to take a I'll show you how we clean this. We just take a towel. And we wipe it off. <sighs> Now, this is going to get about 95% 90, of the water off, but look, look, see, it takes just that overspray off of it, so you get it clean, and again, this is another, just another opportunity to look at it, see if you're finding stuff on there, a blemish, because if you're going to find it, now's the time to do it, not after the paint's on it. Yeah. Anyway, so now let's cheese. Wipe down. Now it's time for the air and blow her dry. Okay, that's how you wet sand. And she's smooth, real smooth. There is no roughness anywhere. So she's ready for paint. And you can see there really isn't anything popping out. There's the two little spots that got fixed. See them? Little red spots? Yep. Got a little bit show through. Little, and this will still pick up. Even though I've been through three layers of this and busting down and it's still knocking off high and low spots. So, or knocking off high spots. So, but now the last thing to do is we'll wipe this down with some chemicals and then shoot it with paint. But that is how you wet sand so if you're still here like share and subscribe smash that button hit that bell tell your friends y'all have a good day because a good day today could be a wet sanded hood in the morning literally y'all be good day eh? is the day we're doing cap corners now i'm gonna show you how to do it so let's get to it all right this is what we're starting with the metal is you can tell where they boogered it before in the past so we're going to take all that off with the da we're going to da this down and just see just exactly where we're sitting and the other side is just as bad or worse so let's get the da up let's see what we got to work with here
Now, I hate to say it, but this is the kind of bullshit you're going to get into when you get into these old trucks. That's mesh. That's screen. They shoved a whole handful of screen in the bottom of this thing just to mud it up to cover it up. So I got to dig all this out and see what we actually got left. Now, I know the backside is solid because I've already been there. I cleaned everything up before I put the gas tank in. So everything on the backside has been cleaned and painted. So I know it's solid on the backside, but this is, can you see it? That screen door mesh shoved in that hole. The whole thing, it's all the way back in here. See it right there? That's the kind of BS that people have done over the years to these things. That's metal, but that's just, it's just sad. It's just really sad. But that's the kind of things that people did. That guy got paid for this job. He got paid for this paint job. Hey, if you're here and you're still watching, like, share, and subscribe. Smash that bell, hit that button. Hey, friends. Okay, now in all actuality, this is really not actually that bad. This is only about four inches, five inches of that, of what I need for a patch. This is solid. You can see down in here, their metal is solid. This is your weep hole for your cab. Go through there, that's solid. See, all this metal in the back is good. So it's a matter of cutting this. Cutting this and just patching just this section because the rest of it's solid. So we'll DA some more and then we'll draw some lines and we'll go get a game plan of what we're going to do. But really, honestly, that's solid as a rock, too. It's just got surface on it. We'll clean all this and I got a nice little special little brush to use inside there on a drill bit. To get in the nooks and crannies and get all the stuff out but right now see she's dry there's no debris but this is what came out of there including the screen and i'm pretty sure the other side is going to be just as bad but that's what we're dealing with right now on this we'll be able to leave that corner coming around and align from here down we I might even go there really is no reason to go any harder but i mean we might go five or six inches with the patch panel and this is all solid. I've had all this on the inside has been cleaned and painted to protect it for the future. So I've seen a lot worse. I've seen a lot worse. So you just say, but this was just the size of my hand is about all we're going to need to replace. Okay, here's what we got figured out. This is how much I'm going to cut off of here. I'm going to leave a line here on the back side. I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to cut it across here, straight in here, and basically down this line right here to the corner. Because I'm just basically, I'm going to be butt welding this. But this is solid here. You know, and we're going to cut this section out. And all I did was because that's why the lines are extended. I'm just kind of eyeballing the patch panel of what I'm cutting off. As you can see, and yes, it's big. It's bigger than it needs to be, but I need to get this section right here. It's hard to do one handed. I need to get this sec. I need to get this section one right here cut off first so that I can get a better fit. 
So, and then I'll, I'll mess with the lines again. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this section off along with this little tab right here because I don't need it because it's good solid metal there. And then we're going to cut the box out and get in there and clean it, paint it, protect it. Okay, I went ahead and knocked off the bottom edge. That's what's wrong with here, but knocked off the bottom. This is the way she's going to sit in like this, and I knocked off that bottom edge so I could get in here real good with it. And I wanted, like I said, I made it a little bit big with my line, which is perfect. All right, so my line that I have drawn, as a matter of fact, I want to, I get this in place exactly where I want it. Yep. There's my mark for my line. Take that off. All the way up against the bottom line, there's there's enough there to do whatever I need to do with because she's going to sink in another, oh, 3 16 of an inch, which I'll be trimming off. But that's the whole point. I got it where I needed it so I could work it and then just start whittling it down from here. So now I know I got a mark. I'll take my paint stick. I'll mark it there because i know that's just right about perfect because it's all the way up again in the bottom and yeah i said again that's a southern term so it's all the way up against the bottom there good line and we can work from here There will be okay, and as you can see, as you can see, there will be a spot welder two involved here. I'm just gonna yep, pop it, which will be ground off later. Boom. There's your piece. All that old nastiness. She's not that bad of shape. Now that's just dirt. But we're gonna clean this all out. That's your weep hole right there. And then you have a sort support piece that runs right up here that runs right up the cab. And then add that one right there that will grind that down a little bit with the flapper wheel. That's spot weld. Which you could probably do another spot weld there, spot weld there if we wanted to on this piece. But now that all that is basically off, and she's pretty straight, we can put this back in place and see how close we are. Because we know we have to take this off. That's pretty dead gum close. So we can, yep. She might be a little bit wide, which is fine. We'll just, it's just a matter of trimming and fitting and trimming and fitting and trimming and fitting now. But let's clean this up. Okay. I told you I had a special little brush I was going to use. I bought this one to clean bolts with to take the bed apart. And man, does it work good in little tight places. It bounced around a lot, but it does a good job. All right, let's do some paint. Okay. After many, many, well, about an hour of cutting and grinding and cutting and grinding, I'm about there. And I just wanted to show you where we're at. So I'm going to have to be very careful around this corner. If you can see, she's pretty close, but she's still... All the dinking around with this has kind of widened the corner on the plate. 
taking off, taking off, putting on, taking off. It's a little bit off from the plate itself, but I think if I tack to here, I can work it around the corner and get it to fit right, right. Here, here. I got plenty of room gapage there, and this is going to bring come right around, tuck right up on it, and you know the seam seal right there that I'm going to have to redo. I'll probably put a tack in there to get it in place where it needs to go. But other than that, this side is pretty good. It's pretty flush, so, and it's, all of it's got a little bit of a gap. Now, I might actually put a little bit more gapage, like, right here, because I want to butt weld this. I don't want to, I want to have a good gap so it's strong. And if you guys don't know what I mean by that, let's go to the whiteboard. Okay. Now, what I mean by butt weld is always going to be stronger than a seam weld or a lap weld. Let me explain it to you. Okay. You want to put a gap in between your two pieces of metal. So whenever you weld this, it makes penetration all the way through. If you make a weld on a plate that's butted up tight where no air gets through and you put a weld on it, you're just going to weld right here. All right, and you're not going to get penetration back. It's going to be super easy just to snap it right off. Okay, lap weld. What I mean by lap weld is some guys take a flanging tool and flange it and then put the piece on like this and then weld here. Again, same problem as this one. You don't have full penetration. So you want to have a little bit of a gap so that whenever you weld that bead, it's in that whole piece and you're going to hear it when you're going to know when you hear it so a butt weld with a small gap so that the penetration penetration can get through to both to both sides it's always going to be a hundred times stronger than that if you took any kind of motion like this then that that weld is going to snap and it's not strong you two you can twist and move and do all kinds of things with a butt, butt weld is, uh, that's got full penetration is always going to be superior to any one of the, either one of these two. So, and I want to make sure that I do it right the first time. All right, so I don't have to do this again so that whenever my grandson hopefully gets this truck, then it's going to still be intact and he ain't going to have to do all this. He's just going to be able to enjoy the truck. Butt welds with a gap, a small gap, are always superior to a surface weld. It's just... That's just the way it is, guys. Okay. Now, I look. know she looks a little ugly right now, but this is just I didn't quite have my temperature set right on my machine. But the biggest portion is that all of this is flat, okay? Now, the problem is going to be here. See how she's a little bit off right here? Now, this line is right. You can see she's pretty much dead on. But this corner is not as sharp or it doesn't have as much bend as the original cab, which isn't it's normal. You know, I mean, I could probably daub this in and make it look good, but what I'm going to want to do is take this off, and I'm going to need to peel this back some, take a little bit of a screwdriver, and get in there and just kind of bend this out till I get to about right here and get a tack in. That way I can push it back around and then get attack in and then attack. So it's, I'm gonna bring it all the way out to here. I'm gonna bring it out to here to the edge because it's, as you can see, get you the focus here. All these are nice and flat. There, you can't even hook your fingernail on it, okay? And this is, this is pretty good still here too. There's a little bit of an edge. So I'm gonna knock, I'm gonna give this a little tap and get this in and get attack right here right here this is gonna be my last tack and then i'm gonna get behind this and pull this out a little bit to get this edge right and then i'll get a tack here and then i'll get a tack in the center to lock it or i'll tack it in here to lock it and then push it because this will be sticking out a little farther and or use the magnet or use a clamp or whatever to push it back in to make around that corner but that's this is just part of it, guys. So everything else is pretty good right now. And no, 
I know you guys, there's some guys out there that are better welders than I am and everything, but this is, this is a driver. This is, I'm going to bring paint in from the backside. I've got an access hole here in the back. The paint's coming in. I'm going to make this thing strong and steady and where grandson will be proud to drive it in 30 years or 20 years, whenever I decide to give it to him. So to be continued. Little ingenuity never hurt. Which is right as rain. All right, so we're going to put tack here, right here. And then we're going to let the, and then we're going to try to actually, actually, that's pretty good. We're going to put tack here and here and hold it and then bring it around on this side. Yep. That's what we're going to do. Tack here. Actually, nope. We're going to. There we go. Yep. Back there. Back there. Okay. Back you there. Come around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. I don't have good lighting, but she's pretty close. She's a little low on this side of the weld. There's a little, but that's, that's filler. You know, so she's a little low. And she's pretty even here, and she's pretty even up in here. So I got a little bit of cleanup to do underneath, but go to the store and get some DA pads. I ran out of DA pads, and a uh, little bit of Bondo, smear it up, DA it down, take the sander to it. She's pretty good. Second side is worse. These, this side's completely gone. And they had actually used a piece of this was shoved up in there as the backing. There wasn't no screen in this side. So you can tell they just kind of bent it under and filled it in. So we'll be taking this completely out. Yeah. She's rotting all the way back to the bottom here. So we'll be pulling, cutting this and using the whole bottom piece without a lot of uh, trimming. But we're gonna have to trim all the way up into here, which is twice as long. You can see my hand. Yeah, we're gonna use a lot of that patch panel and the seam will be up in here. Okay, this is where we're sitting on the passenger side. Other side's already pretty much done. <clears throat> Welded up. This one is kind of the same process. I cut it big, so I would have a lot of space left over to do. So there's about that much right here. It's about right dead center. About that much right here. This is where the line is. As you can see where the line is right here. Let that focus a zip. So, again, we're just going to slowly work it down to where she fits. Where I'm happy, I'm going to have to trim a little bit on this lip on the inside here. Because it's making it stand up, as you can tell. It's making it sit up a little higher than the rocker. When we get done with this, we're going to have to just dip this together and in here. That's it. So this one will be a lot less welding than the other side because it was there was more material. But this one was just, it was gone. It's sitting over there in the pile, just twisted, rotten. Three times as bad as the driver's side. But we'll get to working on this. I'll take my clapper whisk disc and I'll just start whittling this down until she starts fitting. And just We're getting pretty close here. We got her it's pretty much even on the bottom. Okay. Got a little bit of gapage like we wanted. 
this one this is out here facing this one's a little bit off but i really don't care because the most important is getting this line and this line right okay so i gotta take my knee and do a little pushage on here because she's a little she needs to be bent a little bit but she'll get there and get a tack in right about right here to hold it in place to get it up with the even with the rocker but then after that this gap closes up a little bit and then we can let loose of this and let everything just kind of relax and settle because you know she's still got movement i just got her held up with one piece but again just like the other side this corner because this is this is a replacement patch panel that's not perfect okay so i'm thinking about maybe ding nah, i'm not going to do that either we're going to work it just like we did this side, we're going to work on this side. We're going to work across. We'll get it locked into here, and then we'll take the hammer to it, and we'll make the line work. So I'm going to set up the welder and start this process. Oh, and since we ain't got to weld anything underneath here, we're probably going to put the clamp to it and maybe drill a hole and do a couple of spot welds on the backside to uh, lock the bottom side in okay and like i thought this i know don't i know i had it set a little too hot anyways but once i got to this corner it was sticking once i got to this corner it was sticking way out here it was sticking way out here so all i did was i took my little hammer and i just gave it a couple of little small easy love taps just to get it around okay because you can see it's still sticking out a little bit but there's plenty of movement to be able to get this where it needs to go see there's still lots of movement involved a little bit of gapage see nice little gap nice little welding going on so she's tacked up she's ugly right now but we'll fill her all back in and i'll get my setting right on my machine but I turned it down just a little bit just now so but other than that i think we're almost there i need to put a tack in probably right here and then give it some more love taps right in here to get this move well i don't know maybe i can push it that's pretty close no i still need to tap it so but that's just the process it's just i started here came around made sure everything was right and just and I checked with the door, shut the door, made sure the line is right. So now it's just a matter of tacking the rest of the way in, getting it flattened up, and then just zink, 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 just move it around. Now, I've miscalculated a little bit, okay, and so the tacks have drawn this up where it's overlapping, okay? So... She's sitting exactly where I want her to sit. This way, this way, here, all the way around to here, right? She's even all the way across. Now, it drew, when the heat drew it up, okay, drew the gap up that I thought I had. So, how do you fix that? Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to take the cutoff wheel and we're going to start about right here and we're just going to zip on that line. And that'll give us enough space. Trust me. That little sixteenth of an inch cutoff wheel, just going through here, sixteenth of eighth of an inch, is not going to hurt anything, but it'll give us the space and it'll give us the perfect little groove to finish welding it up. And this is not going to be perfect anyways because this line is different than this line. See, this is patch panel stuff right here, guys. But like on a, if this was a fleet side bed, this wouldn't show. But I'm not quite sure how much of this is going to show. It won't really be noticeable, but it'll show, I think, on the step side. I think it'll be, I'm not quite sure how much of this gets covered up. But but anyways, that's how you fix this. You got too much gap, but it's overlapped. You just take your cutoff wheel and you just, you just use that as an edge. And you just real quick, and just take that out. And it'll just be perfect. I'll show you after I get done. And there's your gap, and it's a little bit more of a gap than I wanted, but it ain't nothing I can't daub up with the welder. But 
See, now I have enough movement to get it exactly where I want. And then we can get that edge, which turned out pretty good. I mean, I got to admit, the edge-wise, width-wise, it's spot on. But the the just the way the metal is grooved, the groove here on it, it ain't even close. But that's what you get with patch panels. So we're going to finish tacking this up. And then, let's see, we got, I got the movement that I need. Boom, 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 boom. And we'll get it where it is, where it needs to go. And then we'll finish all welding this in and start grinding. Hey, have you guys tried these yet? I'm telling you what, these are like grinding this stuff. This is the best thing ever I ever found. Keeps it on my beard, keeps it on my eyes. They don't fog. There'll be a link for these down below. I highly recommend these suckers. Okay, she's about 90%. Got her DA down and they actually ended up being a dent here on this cab. I didn't feel it until I started DA in it. You can see where the low spot is. So she's about 90%. We're gonna do a little bit more work with the DA and then we're gonna mix up the Mondo. Then we're gonna smear this and then we'll sand it down and uh, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Smear it and sand it down and then uh, go from there. Now I want to talk to you guys about something, and it's, I don't know if you're noticing, but the consistency of my bondo is a little different than normal. And I was watching this thing online about it, and I added that to my bondo, okay? And I was kind of skeptical about it, about adding resin to the bondo, but when you look at the ingredients list on both si back sides... The same ingredient in that that's in that. So I just add a little bit, stir it up, add a little bit, stir it up, add a little bit, stir it up, and and it just I just played with it a little bit. And I would say I'm probably at like five percent. And oh my goodness, is this gonna be a lot easier to do? So think about trying it now. Now it didn't take a lot. There's a lot in that can. It didn't take much to make that, to make that uh, Bondo that consistency. Just Bondo brand fiberglass resin. Just add a little bit to it and stir it up, and then add a little bit to it and stir it up, and add a little bit to it and stir it up until you find the mix. Well, that's all there is to it. I had a spot on this door. I have this to putty up. I had that one over there to putty up, and a spot on another door to hit while it's here. And that's a matter of just letting it dry. Taking the DA to it, taking the long board to it, getting it all slicked out. Oop, I didn't. But that is how you replace cab corners. And then just a matter of just smoothing it out, making it look good, doing just general body work. And you're finished. So if you're still here, like, share, and subscribe, smash that button, hit that bell, tell your friends. Y'all have a good day.